Hey there smart monkeys and welcome to my channel. This is a special video today because this is going to be the very first video I make for grade 8 mathematics students. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into maths masters. And I post videos every Tuesday and every Thursday. So be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos. So in this video, uh, I decided I was going to start with the section that most of grade 8s in my experience struggle with, and that's algebra. So I'm literally in this video just going to be looking at what are the basics, understanding, getting the foundation um, in understanding what algebra actually is, so that when you move forward and go into actually doing calculations with algebra, then you actually have the strong foundation and actually can easily understand how to do uh, the different types of calculations with variables. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, grade eights. So this is our first lesson on algebra. And we're going to be looking at algebraic expressions. Now, when I teach, I like to start uh, with the basics and making sure that you understand all the terminology. And so that when I actually use the terminology, you actually understand what it is that I'm talking about. Okay, so when it comes to algebra, the first thing that I want you to take note of is variables. So obviously with algebra, algebra is essentially um, uh, expressions that is a combination between of numbers and letters, right? And the letters we are known as variables. And the variables represent values that we do not know, right? So also um, referred to as unknowns, okay? So when you see a letter, it means it represents a number, but it's the number that we, not, we don't know what that number actually is. If I've got two letters in an equation, so let's say I've got X and I've got Y, then X represents a specific number and Y represents a specific number and X and Y don't represent the same number. Okay, so if I look at this sum here, you'll see minus 4X plus 3Y. In this case, X is a variable on its own and Y is a variable on its own and both of these represent two different unknown values. Okay, so that's the first thing that you must understand. The second thing that I want you to understand is that within variables, now remember I said it's a combination of numbers and letters. So when we're working with numbers and letters, we have what is called a coefficient. Now a coefficient is the number and the sign that's in front of this of a variable. So if I look at this uh, question or this uh, expression here, you'll see that x is the variable and it's got a coefficient of minus 4. y is a variable and it has a coefficient of positive 3. Okay, so it's the sign and the number in front of the letter that is known as your coefficient. But then sometimes we have a situation in an expression where we have a number that stands alone that is not attached to a specific variable and that is called a constant. Right? So if you look at this, a constant is the number and the sign that is not attached to a variable. So if we look at this expression now, the constant in this expression is negative 6. Um, and later on, once we start doing calculations with constants, um, with, with, with algebra, I will start, I'll just give you a little bit more detail on what, why it's called a constant. And a constant means remaining the same. But we'll, we'll get to that in a later video, okay? Then the last thing I want you to note is that a degree of an expression, okay? So this is a big word. This, is, this seems to be a difficult concept or a higher grade concept. But in actual fact, the degree of an expression just simply means if I look at an expression, what is the highest power that a variable has in this specific expression? So if I look at the following expression here, you'll see here I've got two uh, variables. The one is y to the power of 1 and the other one is y to the power of 2. Right? So the highest power, which is also known as an exponent, right, would be 2 in this expression. So that means that the degree of this specific expression is 2. Okay, so that's just sort of like the basic, basic, basic. 
of algebra. So now you understand when I say variable or when I speak about coefficient or when I speak about constant, you guys will know what it is that I'm referring to. Okay, the second thing that I want to look at is I want you to understand the concept of terms. Okay, now the easiest way to explain this is if I have an expression, there there are a certain amount of terms. There can be one term, there can be two terms, there can be three terms, there can be an infinite amount of terms. But what separates terms is pluses and minuses that are not in brackets and that are not in a fraction. So let's have a look at something that has only one term. So if I look at this, it says a term is an algebraic expression um, in an algebraic expression are separated by a plus or a minus that is not in a bracket or a fraction. So if I have one term, and one term is also called a monomial, right? So if I have one term, look at this expression, this is 4x. There's no pluses, there's no minuses in this expression, and 4x on its own then is a term, okay? Then if we look here, you'll see, okay, you've got a fraction, but the plus is in this fraction. So that means it's not separating anything. So this is also considered one term. The next one is, if I look at this, this is 3x plus 2, where the positive is inside a bracket. So this is only one term. Okay. Now, it actually makes it easier to understand when there's two terms. So bear with me if you're not quite with me yet. Okay. So two terms is also called a binomial. Okay, so if I look at a binomial, it has two terms. So if I look at this now, do you see that I have a minus that is not in a fraction and not in a bracket? Okay, so in actual fact, what this minus is doing is it's separating terms. So that's why this expression has two terms, 4x and negative 3y. If I look at this next one, do you see that this is also a binomial? Because this now acts as one term and this acts as one term because there's a plus that separates these two terms. Okay, now let's have a look at a trinomial. So by now you sort of get the swing of things. This is now three terms, right? Again, terms are separated by pluses and minuses. So if I look at this, I've got two minuses now that's not in a bracket and not in a fraction. So that means this is a term, this is a term, and this is a term. And together I have three terms, so that is why this is called a trinomial. Another example, here yeah, I've got pluses, at, um, I've got two minuses. We also take note that here is a positive value, right? This is a plus, but because it's in a fraction, that one doesn't count, and it, we don't see the four and the one as separate terms. So this is going to be one term, this is going to be one term, and this is going to be one term, which in total we have three terms. So we have specific names for, you know, when it's one term, two term, or three terms. Then if there's four terms, four or more terms, right? So we will call a polynomial, okay? So this is simple to identify. You just look at the pluses and minuses and whatever values and variables are between these that will tell you what the term is. So this will be one term, this will be two terms, this will be three terms, and this will be four terms. Okay, so I've explained to you the basic terminology that you must understand, and I've explained to you the concept of terms. Now, before we actually look at an example or look at an exercise, I want to quickly just show you one more thing. And this is sort of just sort of like tips to make you understand how we uh, express or how we write certain things with algebra. Okay, so if you look at notation, if I'm saying 4 times x times y, the quicker way that we write it when we're working with algebra is just 4xy. So when you see a number and a variable and variables next to each other without any operations in between, so operation is plus minus divided times, then you will assume that in between these it's actually multiplication. So 4xy actually means 4 times x times y. Right, next one. So in algebra, we really move away from using the division sign and we move towards using a fraction. So instead of writing 4 divided by x, 
In algebra, we will write it as 4 over x. Okay. Then the next one, it says, remove the 1 in front of the variable. So if there's a 1 in front of the variable, now you will know from the first thing I explained to you, is that 1x actually just actually means 1 times x. If there's no operation between these. So this means 1 multiplied by x. And anything multiplied by x remains the same. So you can just write this as x and you do not have to write 1 in front of it. So essentially here by the 4xy there's an invisible 1 in front of the x and there's an invisible 1 in front of the y. So if you have a variable then that actually means there's a 1 in front of it that's invisible because anything multiplied by 1 just remains the same. Okay, so those are the main basic um, concepts and understanding that you need to have before you can even attempt to do any algebraic questions, okay, and calculations. So, let's now try and do an exercise. So, I'm going to give you this exercise now. I'm going to explain and work through it quickly before you attempt it. But once I've explained this to you, I would like for you to please pause this video and then try to answer the questions and then unpause and I will give you the answers. And then you can check if you are on the right track. Okay, so that you can actually see, okay, am I understanding what she has just taught correctly or do I need to go back and have a look at what she's saying on this specific uh, point or for this specific question. Okay, so look at the first question. It says, study the following algebraic expression and answer the questions below. So here they give you an entire algebraic expression. How do we know that this is an algebraic expression? It's because it's a combination of numbers and letters. The first question asks, what is the degree of the expression? So if you remember correctly, you will know that the degree of the expression is the thing, is the value with the highest, is the variable with the highest power. Okay, so you will just write that power down. Second question, what is the coefficient of x squared? So if we look at coefficient, a coefficient is the number and the sign in front of the variable. So the question asks, what is the number and the sign in front of x squared? Okay, then if we look at c, what is the constant in the expression? And if you remember correctly, a constant is a number that does not have a variable attached to it. And that is what you would write down for C. D, the question says, what type of expression is this? So when it asks the type of expression, you will look at your monomials, binomials, trinomials, and polynomials. And then E, write the expression in descending order of X. Now, we didn't look at this in the specific, I didn't explain this. But essentially what this means is you have to rearrange this expression in descending order of x. So in other words, you're going to start where x has the highest power and you're going to write down all the expressions where um, x's variables are then um, gradually decreasing. Okay, so you're going to rearrange this and you're going to write the variable with the highest power first and then the second highest power second and then the third highest power third and that's how you will continue up until where you do not have a variable in that expression. Okay? And then the last question says true or false. 3x to the power of 3 is equal to 3 times x times 3. Okay. So I'm going to give you a chance. Please pause this video now. Try and answer these questions. And then unpause when you have completed it. Alright. So... I hope that you feel confident about your answers based on the explanations that you received. And yeah, let's mark your work and see, um, yeah, see how you did. I will encourage you that if you get a question wrong, make a tick next to it, write the correction down and try and in make sure that you take note of what you are doing wrong so that in a test situation, an exam situation, you do not make the same mistake. Okay, so let's look at the first question. The first is, what is the degree of the expression? So if I look at this, the highest power is 5. So the degree of this expression is 5. Right, so if you got it right, make a tick. If you got it wrong, um, write down the correct answer and then just write an explanation on why 
um, or why five is the actual answer. Okay, what is the coefficient of x squared? So here's x squared. You see the coefficient is the number and the sign in front of x squared. So the answer for b is negative 4. Okay, I hope you got that one right. All right, then let's have a look at c. Excuse me, what is the constant in the expression? So what is the value that does not have a variable attached to it? And that is negative 5. You see here, it doesn't have an x or y attached to it. Then the next question, what type of expression is this? So we know pluses and minuses separates terms. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. So that means it's, three or it's more than 3. So we will call that a polynomial. Right. E, write the expression in descending order of x. So I'm interested to see, because I didn't show you how to do this, I'm interested to see if you got this one correct. Okay, so the way you would write this is that you will rearrange this now. So the highest power is x to the 5, so that's what you will start with there. Then the next one is x to the 4, so then you go plus, because this is positive, x to the 4. Then the next one is x to the 3. And the next one is negative 4, x to the 2. And the next one is negative x, and then we end off where there is no x, which is negative 5. Okay, so when we say descending order, it means the powers are decreasing. So it starts at the highest and it goes to the lowest. So this is 5, 4, 3, 2. And when there's no power there, then it actually means it's to the power of 1. And then there's no variable next to the 5. All right, then the last question, true or false? 3 times x to the power of 3 is equal to 3 times x times 3. This is false, okay, because 3 times x to the power of 3 is actually 3 times x to the power of 3, okay? Or you could have said 3 times x times x times x, because 3x's will then give you x to the power of 3. Okay, so well done if you got that right. And remember, this is your opportunity to find out where you're going wrong. So if you got any of them wrong, make a mental note of it and make sure that you don't make the same mistake in a test. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. All right, grade 8. So that's my first video. I hope that this helped you to understand algebra a little bit better. I will be having, I am in the process of creating a platform where I will make worksheets available to you to practice after every single video. So be sure to keep um, checking my community page on my channel. Uh, this is where I will keep you updated on when that platform is ready. And yes, thank you so much for, for watching. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. Yeah, then I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.